In crystallography, water of crystallization or water of hydration or crystallization water is water that occurs inside crystals. Water is often necessary for the formation of crystals. In some contexts, water of crystallization is the total weight of water in a substance at a given temperature and is mostly present in a definite ratio. Classically, water of crystallization refers to water that is found in the crystalline framework of a metal complex or a salt which is not directly bonded to the metal cation hydrated copper sulfate is bright blue, anhydrous copper sulfate is white. Upon crystallization from water or moist solvents, many compounds incorporate water molecules in their crystalline frameworks. Water of crystallization can generally be removed by heating a sample but the crystalline properties are often lost. Compared to inorganic salts, proteins crystallize with unusually large amounts of water in the crystal lattice. A water content of 50% is not uncommon. Nomenclature In molecular formulas water of crystallization can be denoted in different ways. Hydrated compound NH2O, or hydrated compound times NH2O. This notation is used when the compound only contains lattice water or when the crystal structure is undetermined. For example calcium chloride, CaCl22H2O, hydrated compound N, a hydrate with coordinated water, for example zinc chloride. Z and Cl24 both notations can be combined as for example in copper sulfate, Cu4SO4H2O. Position in the crystal structure, a salt with associated water of crystallization is known as a hydrate. The structure of hydrates can be quite elaborate because of the existence of hydrogen bonds that define polymeric structures. Historically, the structures of many hydrates were unknown, and the dot in the formula of a hydrate was employed to specify the composition without indicating how the water is bound. Examples Q-so-4-5-H-2-O Copper sulfate pentahydrate COCl26H2O Cobalt chloride hexahydrate SNCl22H2O Tin chloride dihydrate for many salts, the exact bonding of the water is unimportant because the water molecules are labelized upon dissolution. For example, an aqueous solution prepared from QSO45H2O and anhydrous QSO4 behave identically. Therefore, knowledge of the degree of hydration is important only for determining the equivalent weight. One mole of QSO45H2O weighs more than one mole of QSO4. In some cases, the degree of hydration can be critical to the resulting chemical properties. For example, anhydrous RHCl3 is not soluble in water and is relatively useless in organometallic chemistry whereas RHCl33H2O is versatile. Similarly, hydrated AlCl3 is a poor Lewis acid and thus inactive as a catalyst for friedel crafts reactions. Samples of AlCl3 must therefore be protected from atmospheric moisture to preclude the formation of hydrates. Crystals of the aforementioned hydrated copper sulfate consist of Cu4 2 plus centers linked to SO42 minus ions. Copper is surrounded by six oxygen atoms, provided by two different sulfate groups and four molecules of water. A fifth water resides elsewhere in the framework but does not bind directly to copper. The cobalt chloride mentioned above occurs as Co6, 2 plus and Cl minus. In tin chloride, each SN center is pyramidal being bound to two chloride ions and one water. The second water in the formula unit is hydrogen bonded to the chloride and to the coordinated water molecule. Water of crystallization is stabilized by electrostatic attractions. Consequently hydrates are common for salts that contain plus 2 and plus 3 cations as well as minus 2 anions. In some cases, the majority of the weight of a compound arises from water. Glabis salt, Na2SO410, is a white crystalline solid with greater than 50% water by weight. Consider the case of nickel chloride hexahydrate. 
This species has the formula NiCl26. Crystallographic analysis reveals that the solid consists of trans-NiCl24 subunits that are hydrogen bonded to each other as well as two additional molecules of H2O. Thus one-third of the water molecules in the crystal are not directly bonded to Ni2+, and these might be termed water of crystallization. Analysis The water content of most compounds can be determined with a knowledge of its formula. An unknown sample can be determined through thermogravimetric analysis where the sample is heated strongly, and the accurate weight of a sample is plotted against the temperature. The amount of water driven off is then divided by the molar mass of water to obtain the number of molecules of water bound to the salt. Other solvents of crystallization Water is particularly common solvent to be found in crystals because it is small and polar, but all solvents can be found in some host crystals. Water is noteworthy because it is reactive, whereas other solvents such as benzene are considered to be chemically innocuous. Occasionally more than one solvent is found in a crystal, and often the stoichiometry is variable. Reflected in the crystallographic concept of partial occupancy, it is common and conventional for a chemist to dry a sample with a combination of vacuum and heat to constant weight for other solvents of crystallization. Analysis is conveniently accomplished by dissolving the sample in a deuterated solvent and analyzing the sample for solvent signals by NMR spectroscopy. Single crystal X-ray crystallography is often able to detect the presence of these solvents of crystallization as well. Other methods may be currently available. Table of crystallization water in some inorganic halides. In the table below are indicated the number of molecules of water per metal in various salts.